The Tao of Self-Confidence, Episode 644. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. Visit our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits. Well, hello, friend. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. I'm your host today, Sheena Yap Chan, and today I have a phenomenal lady on the show today. She is a marketing consultant, a writer, a speaker, and also an author, and I'm really excited to have her on and share her story today with us on self-confidence. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Pam Didner. Pam, how are you today? Maybe you can fill in a little bit more about yourself to the listeners. Yeah, that'll be fantastic. Sheena, thank you so much for inviting me. Very much honored, if you will, to be on your podcast. And by talking to you a little briefly, this is like you have done, I don't know, over 600 podcasts. That's phenomenal. I can barely do one per week and you are doing like over 600. Well done. Well done. A little, uh, just a little things about me. So PM Dinner here, I live in Portland, Oregon, which is a town like uh, along the West Coast of the U.S. And I've been a marketer, if you will, just like you said, for about 10, 15 years. And I work in a big corporation called Intel for about 20 years. And working at that company or working for one company for over 20 years is kind of like a stigma nowadays. And nobody does that anymore. But I was very, very fortunate working for a global company and I had opportunity to move around. I was on the manufacturing floor. I was a program manager. I was operations manager. And I did events and twist of face somehow. And I moved from finance and accounting actually to event marketing and ultimately doing the, a global go-to-market strategy for Intel for several years. And that somehow led to the publication of my first book, How to Scale Content across region, which is global content marketing. And I left Intel about 2014, and it has been about four and a half years and standing on my own feet. And that's a pretty much a journey of its own. So that's pretty much like a three minute bio. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And you know, that's amazing. You were able to make that leap of faith. You know, most people are too scared to do that, especially like you mentioned, it's very rare for someone to work in a company for that long to to make that. I'm sure most people would be like, why would you do that? You've been there for so long, you know, it'd be such a waste. But you know, you know, you had something to offer to the world, something bigger and better that can help other people out there. So thanks for sharing that. And Pam, what's your cultural background? I'm Chinese. And frankly, actually, I would say I'm Taiwanese. I was born in Taiwan and I came to the States when I was 16. And yeah, it was a, a journey. And when I came, I barely spoke English. So and uh, 16, I was literally sophomore in high school. So <laughs> three years of high school is kind of sucked because I did not have a lot of friends. And also I did not speak the language well. But somehow, you know, that somehow shaped you as well, right? And you are thrown into an environment that you are you were not familiar with and you made the best out of it. So yeah, Chinese and then being in the States for over a third some years. Thanks for sharing that. And what would be your favorite self-confidence quote? The one I really like is the fear is the excitement without the breath. And I think a lot of time our level of self-confidence has a lot to do with our fear level. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, what is our level of fear is one to 10. And somehow that will determine in terms of our, the level of the self, self-confidence self that we have. And I have fear on a lot of things. Like, you know, if I go ski, I was like, oh my God, what if I hurt myself? If I speak, I was like, oh my God, what if I screwed up on stage? And even sometimes when I make a meal, I was like, oh my God, what if I burn, you know, the <laughs> state. So, but that level of the fear comes at different level, at least for me. And uh, a lot of time I have to tell myself just to be confident and to try to get myself out there, if you will, and to not worry about the consequences. And this is kind of important for speaking. I started speaking, I would say, in about 2012 and when I was at Intel. And some media companies would invite me to speak at their conferences. I remember the first time I, I stood on stage, I completely sucked. But people were like, oh, you no. Know, I didn't feel like that you were scared. I was like, oh my God, I was <laughs> scared and nervous. And I know I was nervous because I talk very fast. I talk so fast. I was like, oh, 50 minute presentation finished like in 35 minutes. Then over a period of time, that the more you practice, the more you get over that fear. Does that make sense? Now I, I still paranoid, if you will, before I got on 
the stage. But I think the the the, the level of the fearness has come down dramatically, and that has a lot to do with practice and also the self confidence that you learn over time. Is that helpful? Yeah, totally. I mean, we all have fears, right? I remember doing my first YouTube video. I mean, it was the most scariest thing ever. Two minutes of my life, I had to like retake it like forty times. But like you mentioned, you know, pra- practice yeah. is progression, right? You just keep doing yeah. it, and you get better and better and better. And yeah, we all still have that fear, but it goes away a lot quicker than the first time you I do it. Yeah, I one hundred percent agree. And you're talking about you know over six hundred podcasts that you have done. That's fantastic. I've done eighty so far, and I refuse to listen to my first podcast because that was horrible. And I did like forty takes, kind of like you did, but it still it was horrible. And I was like, I told my social media manager, I was like, you can promote all the episodes starting from episode fifty, but anything. <laughs> Before that, don't promote it. Don't promote it. So, because I really do not like it. But you're all right. You know, practice does make it perfect. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And what would be your definition of self confidence? Be yourself, and always tell yourself you are marvelous. And took me a long time to actually understand that. I think Asian women, we in general, it's a, probably a little bit more submissive, or we've been taught to be polite and do things, but not to not necessarily brag. And we don't really make a lot of effort to showcase ourselves, or we don't. Also, I don't know about your Asian upbringings. My parents never said ever that I'm marvelous or I'm beautiful. The first person that that has ever told me that I'm beautiful. Was my husband like age of twenty four? He told me like I'm beautiful. That was the first time I heard like from someone like, oh my god, Pam, you are just gorgeous the way you are. But before that, nobody ever said that to me. So what I want to tell everybody, all the women out there, you are marvelous and beautiful, and just be yourself. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that great definition. And Pam, what was your life like before your discovery of self confidence? A lot of self doubt. It's like, am I good enough? You know, it's like. You you will get up in the morning and you go to work and you make the presentation and you will you always worry about little things like oh am I good enough to do this am I good enough to do that and it's I think it's that self doubt that I'm not good enough and I, I but I also believe that that self confidence needs to be earned as a person grown your experience and your skill set has come with it. And that will also help to build your confidence. And I think a lot of women like come to realize, especially at the age of forty and fifty, that they are actually pretty good. That has a lot to do with the years experience they have cultivated and they learned or earned. Does that make sense? So I feel is、uh, just it, it come with it does come with the time, but you have to pay the price for it. Thanks for sharing that, and I totally agree. It's like having a self confidence bank, right? You slowly、yeah. put put money in, or cur- whatever currency it is, self confidence currency. And the more you build it, the more you have confidence to go out there, and it becomes easier, right? At first, yeah, it's going to be hard, scary. Amen.、Oh, you 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 hit the core. You hit the core. You said it so much better than me. Here I am, like struggling. And using a different words, and it was like, oh my gosh, she, Sheena, you said it so much better than I did. Thank you, but yeah, I mean, you know, we keep building it until we we have that confidence, and we continually build it. And what was that point in your life when you realized you were more than enough to go out there and be who you are today? What was the aha moment? That aha moment is ability to say no. You know, there is like a lot of time women always have a tendency to say yes. We say yes to our husband. We say yes to our colleagues. We say yes to our kids. As if we were super women, you know what I'm saying? We will we will not say no to anybody because we feel that oh yeah, it's important. Yeah, we I don't want to make anybody upset. I want to please everybody, and I want to do things right. And we have tendencies to say yes. I think that the aha moment came when I feel like you know what? I do have an option. My option is to say no. And once you feel that you have the option, you actually feel that you have a power. You have a power to tell people like、Mm-mm, I'm not doing that. But of course, doing an actually more polite way. Well, thanks for sharing that. And yes, you know, especially as Asian women, we've been brought up to say yes to every single thing,、Everything. even even though it makes us uncomfortable and we don't even want to do it. It's like we've been programmed to just do it for the sake of not making any noise, not making any trouble, not shaming our families. And you know, there comes a point in your life when you have to say no, especially if it's something that doesn't align with you, something that makes you feel uncomfortable. I mean. You know, we have our gut feeling for a reason because there's something wrong with it, and you know, we just have to take a stance on that. And because of that realization, what's your life been like now? 
Oh, fantastic! The ability to say no is great. <laughs> like your husband, like, ah, honey, should, can we? We should do this together. Mm-mm. No, I don't think so. I'm not in the mood for that. I think it's actually important in a way that, of course, you are not saying no to everything, and it's that ability to pick and choose what you want to do or what you want to say and who you want to spend time with. And I think that's actually very nice. That in the past, I, I feel that I don't have choice. You know what? To be honest with you, we all have choice, but we kind of put in some sort of a box that we perceive ourselves that we didn't have that choice. But the reality is, we do, and I, I I like that a lot of time. You know, when I get the invitation about to do something, or when I'm asked to take on a client project, and I always think about, hmm. It, this is that important to me, and、uh, yes, well, sometimes it is. And does it make a huge difference? Will this make me happy? And you know, it's Marie Kondo's talking about sparkling the joy. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not saying we have to use that for everything, but it's more or less your ability to pick and choose what you want to do. And I think that actually makes a difference in terms of how you see and how you perceive and feel about life. Thanks for sharing that, and you know that's that's really a great perspective that you mentioned. Because a lot of us, we feel like we never have a choice, and it's hard for us to to make a decision sometimes, right? In our life, especially、yeah. the way we were brought up, it's like we second guess ourselves, and sometimes we just have to learn to just pick and choose what makes us happy. And you know what? Sometimes it might not be something that everyone agrees, but as long as you're not hurting everybody, anybody, I mean, it it helps you. Then why not, right? And I'm glad you're able to do that. And to the woman who's listening to your episode, she may be in her own journey to self confidence. What would be that one tip you would give to her? My advice will be recognize your strengths. And the skill sets, and I think that's actually hard for us to figure out what that is. It's a journey of its own, right? So understand what you are good at, and then continue to learn and strive to be the expert in that field. And I know that we don't say that a lot, but you know, some people are very good at say engineer,、uh, engineering. Some people are very good at coding. Some people are very good at dancing. Whatever that is, right? Recognize your strength and skill set, and then continue to learn. Never stop learning. It's not like you. Get graduate degree and then you are out of college and then you stop. No, the learning part never stop and try to be the expert in your field. And that self confidence will come with it, and you need to earn that. So that would be my advice. But you know, another thing I want to add is kind of like a caveat. You said it earlier, and oh, I said it earlier that we have the power to pick and choose. But granted, you and I, we live in Canada and U.S. and、uh, it's developed countries. The, the attitude toward women probably tend to be a whole lot more progressive than some other countries on this planet. Maybe some of the listeners, you know, the area of the country that you live in, or the religious that you believe,、uh, may not provide that flexibility in terms of that you can pick and choose your own life or what you say. For that, what I want to say is make a baby steps. And th- th- maybe you don't have a huge amount of freedom to do what you want to do, but can you pick and choose the battle with the boundaries or that you can control? And I know it's hard, and not every single woman on this planet can do. She she not like you and me, right? Have that ability to pick and choose, and happen to live in a country that's progressive. But I still want to share with you, the listeners, that if you don't have that that capability to pick and choose, pick a little battle from what you can focus on, and take it from there. Like I said, baby steps. That was great. You know, thanks for sharing that. I mean, it's really important. To know that, yeah, you know, like you mentioned, not all of us live in a in a developing in a developed country like Canada and the U.S. and some parts of Asia. You know, women still are treated like you know a piece of meat. But like you mentioned, it's it's the baby steps that you know yield those big results, right? So I really love that you mentioned that. And you know, Pam, if our listeners wanted to get to know a little bit more about you and what you do, is there any links or social media profiles we can connect with? Yeah,、um, I have my own website because I work for myself. If you would like to check out what I offer as a marketer, check out pamditner dot com. D is in David. I D is in David. N E R. Pam Ditner. And I'm pretty much on every single social media: so LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, and the Facebook. And you can find me anywhere. If you have any specific questions, marketing or even personal growth related, just reach out. More than happy to chat. 
Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And to our listeners, if you want to connect with Pam, you can also head on over to the Tao of Self-Confidence.com and search for Pam's name. Her show notes will pop up along with everything else that we talked about. And I really just want to thank Pam today for taking the time to share her story and tips with us on self-confidence. So thank you so much, Pam. Sheena, thank you so much for reaching out. It has been awesome. Not a problem. It was really great having you on the show. And to our listeners, be on the lookout for another new episode of Another Amazing Woman's Journey to Self-Confidence. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Thank you for tuning in to another amazing episode of the Tao of Self-Confidence. Please subscribe to the show on Apple Podcasts or Spotify to get your daily boost of confidence.